In my last video, I discussed the framework for creating a bulletproof budget for the home that you're thinking of purchasing. But just hearing those steps out loud can really be confusing. So I figured in this video, I would walk you through a real life example so you could better understand how the entire process works. First, here's a quick recap of the action steps. The budget process aims to map out your monthly cash flow. We do this by converting your paychecks into monthly income after taxes. We then analyze the bucket of your expenses to see which will remain and which you could maybe pare back. From there, it'll take a little bit of thought to kind of forecast life and predict as best you can your future debts, your life expenses, your income, to see how much money is left over to use for your housing budget. For this exercise, I'm gonna use the median household income for the Washington DC region in 2023, which was about $150,000 per year. Now let's assume this is a young married couple with no kids. One person makes 90,000 and the other makes 60. The first step is to grab the most recent pay stubs to see how much money hits their bank account after paying taxes, healthcare, and likely their retirement contributions. I made a spreadsheet for this exercise that I'll try to link in the description below just in case you wanna use it yourself, but don't make fun of me for the colors and the formatting as I'm a mortgage guy, I'm not really a, an Excel graphic designing genius, although the formulas and everything are going to be flawless. Now, if you're following along, sort of doing this yourself along with this video, know that your pay stub likely includes a deduction for health insurance and your 401k contributions. For this exercise, I will assume that each of these two contribute 5% of their annual pay towards their 401k, and they have medical insurance taken out one of their paychecks because they're married. Now this would lead to take home paychecks of 2,378 for one borrower and 1,756 respectively for the other. Now I'm gonna put all of that into my spreadsheet here. They get paid 26 times per year. The second borrower is 1,756, also 26 times. Now if you're doing this at home and you don't have this worksheet and there's two people, you're just gonna take your take home pay, add them together, multiply by 26 and divide by 12. And that's the amount you're gonna use for your gross monthly cash flow. So we can see here, this couple that makes $150,000 per year or $12,500 per month, they have just under $9,000 to spend freely each and every month. Now it's time to dig into the expenses. And in the last video, we broke these down into different buckets. The first was survival expenses like food, utilities, insurance. And to map out these costs, I always recommend going through three months of your spending statements. And I recommend getting three months of those to take the average of the line items that fluctuate, right? Not everything fluctuates, but for the things that do, a two or three month average is it's gonna get the seasonality of how you spend money and it just leads to a better budget. So first, if we go to food, let's say there are two people and they go through all their grocery bills, they're looking for Giant, Safeway, Trader Joe's, Costco, Sam's, like wherever you buy your groceries, your food. In this case, this couple spent $2,304 and then number of months in three months, monthly cost of $768. So then they went, they had $534 was their gas and electric bill. Their internet was $79. I'm just gonna put that as one month. Cell phone bills, $236 also one month. And the next is fuel. They added up everything from where they get gas Shell stations, Exxon, whatever, and it was $381 over three months. Now, next up is their insurance. Two people, two cars, they're young, so it's $2,000 annually. For healthcare, you'll have to do a little thought, just kind of think of how much you spend throughout the entire year. What some people might do is put their max out of pocket if they want to be 100% safe. Like, let's say it's $1,000 a year max out of pocket, they'll just dump that in there and know that. They don't get sick very often. Maybe they cut that down in half. And let's say this couple has a small life insurance policy. It's 300 bucks a year. Now we're gonna to move to loans and other debts that need repayment. They do have one payment of $396 and a student loan of 160. And now let's move over here to our loved ones. So young couple, no kids. However, like a lot of young couples, they're testing out being parents by having a dog that needs to go out in the middle of the day. So they have a pet sitter and it's $15 per day that they use this person. And what they found is they spent $720 over three months. And of course, vet visits on an average year, we spend $350. 
So we'll put 350 for 12 months. So let's kind of check in here just real quick. So we're paying our, our basic loans. We're required to pay those. We have our insurances, right? If we live, drive our car, get sick. We have our food, gas, utilities, all of the things that we need to survive in our house. And of course, to keep our animal alive, that's $2,500 so far per month spent just on core goods. And we still have $6,500 left over to kind of spend and enjoy. So as we get through a little further, Further, we have clothing. Let's just say that they spend $400 every three months for work, and then we'll put $400 every two months against two people for casual, and $150 every two months in athletic wear. Now, food away from home or restaurants. You know, I do like breaking this out into solo and social. The reason is you can more easily see where you're spending and maybe in the future where you might want to cut back a little bit. You know, if you're spending on your drive into work or lunch in the middle of the day, could look back and be like, OK, well, I don't have to stop at Starbucks in the morning and maybe I can pack a lunch here or there. It just might be an easy line item for you to target if you're trying to cut back. Well, social dining and being out with friends, that might be one of your non-negotiables where you're like, no, I enjoy doing that. I'm not going to change that. So after review, this couple had six hundred and ninety two dollars in solo eating. And for social eating, $1,908 over three months. Entertainment can blur with social dining. But for this exercise, maybe just target the things like happy hours, movies, day trips, concerts, things that aren't every week, but maybe a few times each month. And it might look a little bit something like this. So you have $278 in bars and restaurants. You enjoy going to movies. You don't do a lot of day trips, but you do like concerts. And if you're anything like me, you're always going to enter into some races from time to time. And I mean, for me, that's non-negotiable. So we'll put that down as well. And of course, we have our guilty pleasures. So of course, necessities, right? Everyone's going to look at this just a little bit differently. But I'm going to use $450 for hair appointments over three months, nails, $346 every three months. I am including tips in these, I did kind of ask my wife. Now, granted, she doesn't actually get her nails done. And let's say you like massages, so each get one every month. And then let's say you want to highlight men's haircut, $45 every month. And now it's time for those pesky memberships. Now, every time I go through this exercise, I swear I find $100 a month that I end up canceling. So this is fun yet frustrating. We'll start with annual memberships. So things like Amazon, Costco, Sam's, we're gonna put $240 and as a 12 month expense. Uh, you have your gym membership, let's say that's $79 every single month. You have music apps like Spotify, uh, Apple Radio, things like that. We're gonna say $45, I think you could probably get that weight down. I have a family of four, so mine's probably something crazy like that. And then your watch apps would be like YouTube TV, Netflix, Apple TV, I'm going to put $95 for a month. I put this list here for just apps. Now for me, I know that I have a Strava connection. I think that's, is that 80 bucks a year now? I think it is. And then I have something called Training Peaks. I know that's 125, but there's two of us in our household with that. So it's 250. That's actually a 12 month. All right, we're getting close. I know this is draining, but uh, this couple takes actually two vacations a year. One is $2,500, kind of a big vacation. Another one's 1500. So then we can look at our transportation budget. So that's things like Uber, Park Mobile, uh, auto repair bills. And, you know, when they went through, they found $214 in Uber over three months, found $76 in Park Mobile and just various uh, parking garages. And they decided to use $50 a month for auto, that's $600 a year. Now this last section here, miscellaneous expenses, takes a little bit of thought because a lot of this is really annual. So one is just sort of your what if account. You know, I just wanna put $150 a month in an account for like stuff. And then birthday presents. So you gotta kinda think, who do you buy birthday presents for and how much do you spend? So I'm gonna put $400 a year for 12 months for that. Holiday gifts, again, if you have kids, it's gonna be a lot more, but let's say you're a generous person, you spend $750 during the year total, and you're also equally as charitable. So whatever you spend for holiday gifts, you give to charity. I'm gonna kinda stop there for now because you can start tweaking this based on, you know, hey, I wanna put $1,000 a month in my uh, mutual fund or 500 or whatever, right? So you've got other fields here you can play with. So now we just went through what should be most everything that someone would kind of live and spend. And if we take a look at the spreadsheet, now we have $3,300 a month
month left over. We had $9,000 to spend, and you can just see roughly where are we spending the bulk of all of our money. Right now we have $5,600 worth of bills, and that leaves $3,300 remaining. Now there was one thing that I didn't put in at the very beginning because I didn't actually have paychecks, but right here we can go ahead and put exactly how much money is going into the retirement account. They're saving $7,500 a year. This little amount right here did not carry over into the net monthly cash flow for a reason because this money technically is already coming out of your take home paycheck. One way of looking at this is this person could end up with a $3,300 mortgage and they could technically say that that's okay. But let's scroll down a little and get into your future home repairs. Now, it just depends on what kind of property you're going to buy as to how you budget for this. Some people say it's like, oh, it's 1% of your home's value per year. That's just kind of wrong in my book because it depends on how old your house is. It depends if it's a condo or single family. Do you have landscaping or not? For my house, like I literally haven't spent really any money on my house in seven years. And it's a single family home with the, with the well, landscaping was crazy. But, but let's say you want air filters and it's $90 and you have to do that three times per year. Uh, gutter cleanings, it's 150 bucks and you do that twice a year. Landscaping, let's say this house you have it's $500 in like mulch and flowers and whatever. You do that once a year. And then the random what if maybe stuff. Let's say you just assumed you'd spend $1,500 in random maintenance on your house. And now if you scroll up, you can say, ooh, that's a $3,100 mortgage that we can get. Wow, that was quite the exercise. And it probably took someone a solid 45 minutes to put all that together and comb through their statements. But I think you would agree that it is a very helpful healthy exercise. So when we got to the end, it was about $3,000 left over. You know, it's not uncommon for me to see couples just like this renting for about three grand a month. So to me, that looks about accurate. But what's absolutely wild to see and will blow your mind when you see it, I'll show you at the end of this video is what payment the mortgage company would actually allow this couple to have. Now, before I go further, if you found value in this video or any in the home buying series, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel. That way the YouTube algorithm will send this video to others like you who are trying to research how to buy a home responsibly. We're not done yet. <laughs> this is step one and now you can actually dive in and really start tweaking things and think, you know, for one, there's tax savings when you buy a property. This take home pay might actually increase by a couple hundred dollars a month because you own this house and there's this tax write off. It's a little more complicated. Definitely check out the video I have on tax savings. But you might look at this and say, you know what? We do just eat out way too much. When we go out with friends, we spend $150 almost every single time. So what if we just went out once a week and that morning stopped to get the coffee and the sandwich. Well, that's just silly. We can do that at home. If we really want this house, we can cut back a little. We'll drink coffee at our own house and bring a mug, make our own little sandwiches. So I think we can get that down to $300. But if you do that, maybe your food goes up a little bit. So maybe that's going to be like $24.50 because now you're making some of your own stuff. And you could look a little further. Maybe for me, my wife says, hey, man, you have to do one less race. All right, do one less race. I go to my daughter and I'm like, hey, Lil, do you really need training peaks? Probably not. Strava. I don't need it. I could pull that back. Music apps. I think Amazon Prime has music. So why are we paying for Spotify? Could you just make that zero? Could we pull back our Uber budget? Maybe that's 150. Other things that happen, and this is interesting, like what about your loans? So sometimes you look at the debts that you have and those debts might actually roll off in the near future. So as an example, what if this couple had that $396 car payment, but it was going away in nine months? Well, if you bought a house and the house is this long term mortgage commitment, payment commitment, should you realize that you're only pinched for maybe six or seven months after you buy your house? So maybe you zero that out in your budget. Another thing to think about is student loans. This couple's on an income based repayment, but what if that goes up? So they went and looked at it, they're like, ooh, good thing we checked that because our future payment is 350. And then we looked into the gas and electric bill, this house, these single family homes that we're thinking of purchasing they're actually more expensive. It's more like $300 a month fuel. So this was one thing that was interesting. I've had people that they were in, living in the city 
and then they moved out to the burbs and they said, hey, I'm just going to commute in three or four days a week. Well, their gas budget went up by two or three hundred dollars a month from all the commuting. Well, that's a real expense. And that's something you have to think about. How is what I'm spending today? How is that going to change? So let's just add an extra hundred dollars there. What if you have raises coming in the future? Let's say that you're going to get this person right here, the, the, the person that makes 90,000 a year, said, hey, I'm going to get a 10% raise. That's $9,000 a year. Say um, 9,000 divided by 26, and let's say they take home about 80%. So his paycheck is going to go up to 26.54. His here goes up, uh, I don't know, 18.56. So now we actually have some raises that are coming in the future. And because of those raises, they can now have up to a $4,200 mortgage payment. The reason I bring all this up for you is that there is no right answer for anyone. The right answer could be mapping out life right now, tweaking how it might change with this new purchase in the future, and then sort of picking a number that says, okay, we can do that. We know we can do that. There's more to the story about how much cash you have. What is your reserve balance of life? How much are you saving or investing? You know, some people might look at this and say, you're crazy if you get a $4,000 mortgage. You, this person right here. Because really, you should be contributing more to your investments. So if we go all the way down here, you know, you both need to start contributing an extra $500 a month. You know what? $500 a month each. So $1,000 for your retirement. But now your mortgage should be $3,200, not $4,000. You see there's personal preference in life desires, in your investment strategy. And sometimes for some people, buying a house is something where you're gonna scale back life. You're actually going to limit what you do and what you experience so that you can have the home, the stability, the security, the future wealth appreciation, the possible refinance strategies of the future where the mortgage payment maybe goes lower, not guaranteed, likely to occur. In order to do that, you have to scale life back to get in. And knowing that you have this other asset working for you, you're paying it down. You could watch the video on how I think real estate is a great tool for average people to build massive wealth over time. Maybe you can scale back temporarily some of your other savings and investments. Maybe you pull your 401k back for two years until that raise comes in or that car payment is paid off. I told you earlier how shocked you would be if a lender guided this client from the beginning. You know, at $12,500 a month of income with just a car payment and a student loan, this couple would have qualified for a mortgage payment ranging from $4,900 to $5,500, which represents about a 45 to 50% debt to income ratio. Think about that for a second. When we started this exercise, if this buyer changed nothing and they continued to live life the way they are today, they only had about $3,000 left over for a housing payment. Yet the lender would have easily given them a payment that was $2,000 more than that. Now, this is when buyers get into trouble. This is exactly when financial hardship can cause someone to lose everything. If they take on more than they can handle and they're not prepared to cut back on some of their spending habits. So now that you have your budget dialed in, you can start talking to a lender to get pre-approved. You know, your lender plays a very important role in the home buying process. And I'd argue that shopping rate right alone could set you up for failure. So be sure to click or tap the screen and watch the next video where I will tell you everything you need to know about finding the best lender. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.